Good morning. This is Keller Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A Sioux Falls man is behind bars this morning accused of robbing a bank on the west side of the city. Police say it happened at the Wells Fargo near 41st Street and Marion Road around 930 Tuesday morning. Authorities say 39-year-old Matthew Timoney walked inside and presented a note to the cashier. The cashier gave him money, but he didn't get away with it. Other customers ended up holding him until police arrived. Timoney is charged with robbery, second degree, and petty theft. Meanwhile, it was an intense Tuesday afternoon in a central Sioux Falls neighborhood as police searched for someone with a warrant. We shot this video around 4 o'clock. Several patrol cars are in the area near 6th Street and Spring Avenue, which is just a few blocks from the police station. We spotted numerous officers walking around. We even saw one of them look inside a trash can. A registered sex offender with convictions spanning four decades is charged with indecent exposure. Police say 68-year-old Timothy McKinley took off all of his clothes at a Sioux Falls laundromat Monday night. There were other people inside the business, including a child. The South Dakota Sex Offender Registry says McKinley currently lives in Sioux Falls. He was convicted of five sex crimes in Nebraska. His past victims ranged in age from a 14-year-old boy to a 52-year-old woman. In court, the judge decided to let McGinley out of jail as long as he stays out of trouble and away from children. Two of the highest-ranking Mitchell Baseball Association board members are charged with intentionally failing to report a crime against a child. Six members of Mitchell's post-18 team are charged with rape. Now their coach and Mitchell's director of baseball, Luke Norton, faces four charges for not reporting the alleged crimes immediately. Two of the charges stem from incidents in 2022 and 2023. Board President Jeremy Borgen faces one charge in connection with this year's investigation. Warrants have been filed for both men's arrests. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munn. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Travis. Good morning, everybody. Uh, temperatures today in the 60s will have mostly dry skies. We'll have to watch that rain chance late today across western South Dakota. Rapid City's high at 64. We'll hit 67 in Pier, 67 in Sioux Falls, and 63 today in Aberdeen. So we have rain starting as early as tonight. Uh, lasting into Friday, now along with it, we'll have strong winds as well. We're talking wind gusts over 40, over 50 miles per hour at times. And Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Gymnasts will soon find out if they can compete for their schools this season. The Sioux Falls School Board cut the gymnastics program earlier this year, citing lack of participation and the cost. The athletes have since filed a lawsuit against the school district, claiming the decision violates Title IX. In court Tuesday, the plaintiffs asked for the gymnastics program to be reinstated for the 2023-24 season. A judge will make a ruling later this week. A Sioux Falls nurse just got back from a two-week trip to Ukraine. During his time there, he worked with a group called Global Care Force. The organization helps bring medical care to villages in Ukraine. So our volunteers have to go to them every month to provide care for them. That's basic. Um, you know, basic health care from uh, just delivering pharmaceuticals, delivering medications, doing wellness checks with them. And a lot of the conditions are chronic health care of older individuals, but they have no other way to receive care. The most recent group helped over 400 patients in nine different villages. For more information on Global Care Force, there is a link right here on our website. And a lot of people like to decorate for Halloween, but very few go to the lengths that a Hartford couple does. Louis and Courtney Hernandez turned their front yard into a graveyard of sorts, decked out with tombstones, talking dolls, and skeletons. They do it every year for their nine-year-old son, Liam. Liam was born October 15th. Um, he was born very sick. He um, pretty much came out dead. Liam had meningitis and was blue after breathing in amniotic fluid. He spent two weeks in the NICU until he was well enough to go home, which just so happened to be Halloween. To mark the occasion, every Halloween they celebrate Liam's birthday by decorating their yard like this. 
Well, let's look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather picture here as we go toward tonight and tomorrow. We've got a winter storm watch in effect for the Black Hills. That does include Custer, Hill City, Rapid City, and all the way up to Sturgis and Spearfish and clear back towards Sundance, Wyoming. So heaviest snows obviously will be in the highest elevations, but we're going to keep a close eye on that because there's still some fluctuations on temperature and there's plenty of water to go into this system. We're talking right now, based on the new analysis here, um, here as of about seven this morning, we're looking at Rapid City. Total precipitation forecast right now is now starting to hone in between two and four inches of liquid. So if we just take a fraction of that and produce snow, we can easily start getting three, six inches more than that into the higher elevations of the hills. We put a six to 12 out now, and we'll continue to watch that. Again, that's going to depend on how fast that temperature drops tomorrow morning into the afternoon. And, of course, these October systems, anyway, they're a little flighty on that accord. Let me show you this, too. The uh, updated Futurecast update this, uh, this evening shows those sh showers and thunderstorms in the southwest. That'll be a round of rain first. And then also ongoing in the southeast, we're expecting some rain to develop. And these thunderstorms that pop up tonight, it'll be very interesting to see where these things develop. There's some of the data that's pointing toward more of a southerly solution. Uh, instead of it being along Interstate 90, it might be parked a little closer to the Missouri River. And that'll be important because... Some of you will get right off the bat going with some heavier rain totals even before 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I want to at least put that story out there that there's going to be some rain in parts of the southeast. We could tug that a little south. Bottom line is when you look at the general picture, though, it's not going to matter a lot because we're eventually going to pick up more rain in these different rounds that will keep coming through. Obviously, you pay attention to your snow in the Rapid City area. And there's a look at Thursday evening. Look at that rain East River. And did we mention the wind? Well, there's a lot of that, too. This is just off the European model. Kind of gives us a broader picture of some rain potential. A lot of these numbers are somewhere between one and a half and two and a half inches of rain. I think if you're just looking for a generic average, that's a good range. You're going to have, though, some embedded clusters that are going to go above that. You could also have a few areas that will probably be a little below. But that's just kind of the nature of these storms. You notice the north central the northwest numbers are not as high uh, i would say that's probably the the lesser chance of rain is up in those uh, parts of kettle Lamb. here's your wind don't forget about all that it's going to be 30 to 50 out of the east we could even have some gusts more than that at times that sounds like a lot of weather doesn't it well upper 60s to low 70s today good day to kind of prepare farmers will be busy trying to do what they can and then we'll have to put harvesting on pause for a little bit with this rainy wet and windy weather. It looks like Saturday morning this will kind of wrap up. Not exactly off to a warm start next week, but it does look drier Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. Highs in the 50s. Aberdeen also good chances of rain. The numbers in Aberdeen, again, are not going to be as high as Sioux Falls, but you can still get at least a half an inch to an inch of rain. That is very much on the table there. I would just caution you, the farther west you go toward Mobridge, the numbers, there's going to be a sharper cutoff zone in that portion of South Dakota. Pier is also still involved with some of these heavier numbers, so I would caution you there. We've talked about areas near between... Well, anywhere from winter to rapid, there easily could be some three-inch rains or more. Rapid City, too. A lot of rain coming in tomorrow and uh, continuing to do early on Friday. Check out the details. So we got a lot more to say on this storm online at kettleland.com.